Hey there, welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. What could be cooler than fighter jets? Fighter jets in space, that's what. The only thing that could make the elegant swooping dance of death that is a fighter jet dogfight cooler is putting a planet's horizon as the backdrop and adding some frickin' plasma bolts going pew 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 pew. While real-life technology isn't there yet, and the latest Star Wars movie only lets us passively experience space-fighting thrills, thanks to video games, we can jump into the virtual cockpit of our favorite sci-fi fighter and duke it out like the Red Baron of outer space. The latest game satisfying our never-ending thirst for space combat is Star Wars Battlefront 2, and while they made a bit of a furball of the game's release in classic EA fashion, they nailed how an outer space dogfight should look and feel to make a fun video game. But the physics of it all are completely wrong. It's not the fault of the game developers, since they're just working from source material that dates back to 1977, when Star Wars A New Hope was released. Creator George Lucas borrowed heavily from real dogfights and movies set during World War II, but the environment of space is so drastically different, many of the elements of Lucas's battles make absolutely no sense when applied IRL. For one thing, a lack of atmosphere would completely change how our space fighters maneuver. Jets down here on Earth use moving surfaces on their wings to steer air around. When a pilot pulls back on the stick, the control surfaces at the rear of the plane, called elevators, tilt, forcing air up. The air pushes the back of the plane down, tilting the nose up, and the engine powers the plane off in its new direction. Ever stick your hand out a car window and tilt it up and down? The air that pushes your hand around does the same thing for fighter jets. In space, there is no atmosphere, so moving control surfaces would be an exercise in futility. Space fighters would need some other way to change which direction they're pointing, and there are a couple ways to do this. One way is having multiple small thrusters around the spacecraft. Some satellites today use this system. They fire spurts of gas from small nozzles positioned all around their body to orient themselves. It's pretty straightforward, but it does require fuel to work. So if you're in a hard dogfight and run out of steering propellant, you become an easy target. Another way to change where a space fighter is facing is with a gyroscope. A spinning disc has angular momentum, and angular momentum is a property that is conserved, meaning it remains constant unless acted upon by an outside force. No, not like the force force, the more scientifically accurate mass times acceleration force. So when force is applied to the disc to tilt it one way, the disc would apply force back on the spacecraft in the opposite direction. You can experience the same thing by sitting on a swiveling stool holding a spinning bicycle wheel and tilting the wheel one way or another. However, changing which way your space fighter is pointing won't make you gracefully swoop through the combat zone like a mighty eagle. Because there's no atmosphere, there's nothing to slow you down. That's great news for fuel conservation. It means you can get up to the speed you want to go and then turn the engines off. But if you pointed your nose in the new direction you wanted to travel and kicked on the thrusters, you would massively overshoot your target because you would carry the same speed going the direction you were facing before. Think more asteroids than Battlefront 2. Just changing which way your fighter is facing would just make you a tumbling mess hurtling through outer space. You'd look more like a five-year-old on an out-of-control saucer sled than a fearsome warrior of the Rebel Alliance. Not only would a space battle between space fighter spaceships in space be a chaotic mess, in all likelihood they would probably never happen in the first place. In today's skies, most fights are settled before combatants can even see each other, thanks to advances in missiles and radar technology. The next generation of fighter jets like the F-35 are designed less with a focus on maneuverability and more aimed towards controlling the battlefield from afar. By the time we get to space fighters, I'm willing to bet our long-range weapons technology will do most of the fighting for us. So how do we hit a target at extremely long distances? The primary weapons on the fighters in Star Wars are called laser cannons, because according to lore, they use lasers to generate bolts of plasma. They have some advantages over missiles, like being faster, and they don't need to be steered in flight, which brings up all the same problems turning your spacecraft has. Plus, space missiles couldn't rely on warheads, since an explosion in space would be much less effective. Without air around it, those expanding gases released by missile explosions wouldn't get the added kick of a shockwave, and the force of the blast would dissipate quickly. You could use projectiles that are basically heavy slugs hurled at great speed, giving them a ton of destructive force. But when you launched one, it would push back on your fighter in the opposite direction, slowing you down or throwing you off course. Plus, if you miss, that baby will just keep on going until it hits something. Think of the poor moisture farmers ten systems over who will get quite a shock when your errant round turns his moisture farm into a crater years after you pulled the trigger. So plasma bolts it is. While plasma weapons may be suitable for a space battle, their depiction in the game is all wrong. The way they look and sound are both incorrect. 
First off, plasma bolts would be soundless in space because there's no air to carry the sound waves. Plasma is the fourth state of matter after solid, liquid, and gas, and it's the state with the most energy. So much energy, in fact, that the atoms become stripped of their electrons, and the free electrons in atomic nuclei whiz around. Without bound electrons, the plasma bolts would be invisible, and you wouldn't be able to see them like the bright green and red bolts our dueling space heroes shoot at each other. That's because atoms normally emit light when their electrons absorb energy, jump to a higher energy level, and then drop back down again, emitting energy as a particle of light called a photon. Since the electrons in plasma are free from their atomic nuclei, they're not bound to an energy state, meaning they can't jump between energy levels and give off light. The closest thing you could get to Star Wars-like depictions would be a faint pink glow around the edges of a bolt of hydrogen plasma or a hint of greenish-yellowish glow around argon or nitrogen plasma, caused by gas that isn't quite hot enough to lose its electrons. Ideally, though, you want your plasma to be completely invisible, or you're losing energy to radiation. It is possible to pack the plasma dense enough that the free electrons collide with the atomic nuclei and give off light, but the broad-spectrum radiation produced, called bremsstrahlung, would look yellow or brown. Any way you slice it, the bolts just look wrong. Now, maybe I'm being too hard on Star Wars, so I'll throw it a bone. There is one awesome thing about using plasma weapons that sci-fi gets right. It opens up the possibility of force fields. Since the atoms in plasma are separated into negatively charged electrons and positively charged nuclei, the particles can be diverted by magnetic fields. This is how we're protected on Earth from the stream of charged particles our sun spews out. A powerful magnetic field around a space station or starfighter could be a good counter to plasma bolts. Plus, stray bolts that head towards distant planets would get harmlessly gobbled up if the planet has a magnetic field. And if it supports life, it better have one. So no need to ruin Mr. Moisture Farmer's day, unless Uncle Owen won't tell you where the R2 droid is. When you add it all up, real space battles of the future will be silent, distant affairs where awkward, tumbling ships appear to break apart for no reason since nobody can see the energy weapons. That's not as exciting as the swashbuckling fights of Star Wars Battlefront 2. For once, I think I actually prefer video games to science on this one. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't not subscribe. For more overthinking of fun sci-fi games you used to just enjoy for fun, check out our episode on how Halo's ring worlds would work here. And don't forget to keep on playing. In 2016, scientists observed a star that got dimmer and brighter in an unpredictable pattern. While a lot of explanations were proposed, the one that grabbed the most headlines suggested some sort of alien megastructure called a Dyson Sphere was blocking out light as it harvested energy from the star.